In this video, we're going to be looking at the pan and VR method for helping create consistency in your characters. It can be helpful in advertising your business to have a consistent character across your content. And it works amazingly for storytelling to make sure your characters stay the same throughout the story. Like the character you can see on your screen right now. Stay tuned to see the short video I made using the method we will be covering in this video. But first, I want to show you how to do it. Just a quick note here. I will mainly be using the version 5.2 mid journey model in this video. There may be newer versions out as you are watching this, so feel free to use them. But if you would like to get the same results I'm getting in this video, I would advise you to use the 5.2 model. The same rules should mostly apply to all models. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so first up, I'm actually going to show you a way which I call the CSVR method, which is the character sheet vary region method. So we're going to create a character sheet. So we have multiple poses on one image. And then we're going to use the vary region tool to edit the image to whatever we want, really. Okay, so I'm going for a young boy character. And this is the prompt I'm using. So what character sheet does in a prompt, it just makes sure that it has multiple versions of the same character in your image. And this just helps to get variety of your character. And you just want to make sure you've got some basic details about your character. Not too much, otherwise mid-journey may get overloaded with too many things and the prompt might not work properly. So I've just added in blue sweater and black short pants. As this is just an example, so I don't want to go too crazy. So we've got these here. And they look pretty good, there's some different styles. But I actually like the look of this lower left one. Looks kind of like an anime style. And if anyone's curious about looking at the prompts, I've included a document below, including all of them. Okay, so I've just upscaled this image. So now we're going to look at how powerful this very region tool is. Now what it actually does is you can select parts of your image and then type what you want to go into that part that you've selected. So as you see, you can either choose a rectangular tool or a lasso tool. So the lasso tool just lets you kind of select whichever parts you want with a free hand motion. Whereas a rectangle tool will just create an area with rigid square lines. So I'm gonna choose the lasso tool and I'm going to select this, this top middle character here. So I'm gonna take out this wide open arms prompt and I'm going to write in what I would like the character to be doing. So I put on a chair. Now you may have to do a few re-rolls to get the image that you're looking for, but let's just see what it does. Now it's good to use a character sheet method for this instance, as it will look around the image and use the other characters as reference. Otherwise, if you just had a single character on an image and selected that whole character and then wrote in on a chair, it will create a totally different character. Whereas this, you want to have consistency with your character doing different things. Okay, so we got some pretty wild results there. So you can see the top left, it's just a chair. Top right, he's kind of disappeared into the chair with a weird hand. Number three looks pretty good. This bottom left one here, he looks like he's just kneeling down maybe. And number four, he's disappeared into the chair. It's not quite what we wanted, but you can finesse the prompt if you want. And you can also very region these images as well, and it should give you a pair of legs. Okay, so now let's see if I can get those legs back into the image by using very region. And there you go, it actually works really well. So if there's something in an image that you've produced from very region before, and it's not quite right, you can still use it again to get the results that you initially wanted. So I'm curious to see if this method could work for getting the character to say, hold an item or interact with something. So let's see what it would be like if our character was playing a guitar. And these turned out really well. It even added a dynamic pose to the character. He's not just stiff, he actually looks like he's playing the guitar. I'm really impressed with these because it could have just pasted a guitar onto the character, but he's actually in the pose. It looks like he's playing it. That's really cool. So as you can see, it opens up so many opportunities for storytelling and your character. Let's see what our characters like playing soccer. They, they turned out not too bad actually. Some of them like his arms missing in this top left one, but you can you can fix that pretty easily. This ball in the top right's a bit small, but you just wouldn't use that image anyway. 
Okay, now I'm just going to experiment if we select more of the image instead of just that one character. So let's select the top two characters. And I'm going to have him sitting on a sofa. Okay, these are pretty interesting. So like the chair one before, it's just got two of the images, just a sofa. But the top right one, he's disappeared into it, or just, <laughs> it's only his leg and arm left. Um, but the bottom right one looks great. That could easily be used, even though he is... He's missing his other arm, but I don't know, it could be behind him. But like I say, you just keep doing a re-roll until you get the image that you like. So by selecting more of the image in the very region mode, it just gives it a bit more room to play around with what it's going to make. So now I'm going to select even more of the image, and I'm going to prompt in riding a bike. And let's see what it does. Alright, so more interesting results. The top left ones aren't that great. Looks like he's on a half unicycle in one of them. He's got three arms in the bottom left. Bottom right ones aren't too bad. Top right on the left is pretty good actually. Yeah, that could easily be used. And like I said, the more re-rolls you do, there should surely be one that will meet your requirements. Okay, so now I'm actually going to use the Very Region tool to change one of the character's arms, as his hand doesn't look quite right. So in the prompt, I've just added in hand waving, and let's see what it does. And there you can see, it's actually changed the character's hand, and it looks much better. It's given us a variety of different hands. So yeah, this is great for correcting any problems within the image. Or an alternative way to get his arm back is you can save this image, go into a free photo editing software, like Photop, and select one of the arms off the other characters, and paste them onto the character without the arm. This is a roundabout method, but it is possible to do. So here are a few more examples of what we can do with our character. So here's our character having a drink, but you may have to specify what kind of drink, as it looks like our child is drinking a beer in a couple of these, which is quite alarming. And here's our character with a violin, and here's our character wearing a bag. And as you can see, it gives some pretty different results. Now, I'm not saying they're all bad, I'm just saying they're all quite different, and maybe not what you were wanting. But you can keep trying, and maybe changing the prompt slightly to get the results that you're looking for. And now I'll show you how you can actually use the Very Region tool to change the background for the character. So in this example, I've actually got just another version of the character that we've been working with, just in a slightly different style. Okay, so just use the Lasso tool and select around the character as closely as you can, just so that all the background is selected. And type in the kind of background you want. So in this one, I've used the prompt Forest as the background. These are quite interesting results. The scale is quite off in one of them with, with the small trees, but it still looks kind of cool. Another way of getting your characters into a scene is by removing the background behind a character using this free website which removes the background and then placing that character on top of the environment you've created using a free software called Photop. And we've actually covered that method in another video which is linked below. And this is our character in a city. You may have to finesse the prompt a little bit better, as I just gave it a basic prompt. So that's why I think the scale is quite off in this image, but it does give a quite nice image in the end. And here we can use the Very Region tool to do select edits on the character. So here I'm going to add some glasses onto him. And they turned out pretty well, actually. It's given us four different sunglasses. And you can get your character holding different items as well. So in this one, holding a book, and let's see what it does. So just select his hand area and a bit of the surrounding area where you want the book to be. And put in the prompt, holding book. And they look pretty good, and it still has the same style of the image. And now I'm going to try the pan method. I'll first do it on our cartoon character, and then I'll do it on a more realistic looking character. So how this works is you either pan to the left, right, up, or down, and you just add into the prompt what you want to be in those new areas. So for this prompt, I'll try a little boy riding a horse and see how that looks. And there you go. It actually looks really good. 
Now, there may be some times where a bit will be cut off, but you can just move again to the side where the clipped off area is and it should fill it in. And here's a few other examples of the cartoon character using the pan method. Okay, so now I'm going to try the pan method, but with a more realistic looking character. So the prompt I've used is a woman, tan skin and dark hair, brown eyes, natural lighting, Kodak Portra 160, split into multiple different images, shot from multiple angles. Now the split into multiple images and shot from different angles is an interesting prompt to use as it's similar to the character sheet method. It's good if you want to get good close-up detailed shots of more realistic people. All right, so these actually look pretty good. I'm going to upscale the top left one. So from here, I'm going to pan to the left of the image. So what this will do, Mid Journey will fill in an area to the left with more of the same kind of image. I won't add anything new into the prompt yet, I just want to see what it creates first. Okay, so not too bad. Some of them don't look quite like the character. Yeah, the top left one kind of does. Top right, not so much. And the bottom right one is very much that same character. Okay, so now I'll go back to the original image and I'll change the prompt slightly. So in this one, I'll change the prompt to a woman in a cafe and see what that does. So what it should do is the new part of the image to the left that we've panned to should be a version of the same woman, but in a different location. So she should be in a cafe in this next one. And that's the interesting thing about the pan method. If you've got these reference images that it can use, you can keep panning or moving wherever you want, adjusting the prompt to create your character in different locations or doing different things. All right, so here are the results for the woman in the cafe. Now they don't look too bad. Some of the images are more like environmental shots, like just of the cafe itself. But yeah, it's a nice photographic style. They're a bit small, but you can always up them later on. So now let's try a different prompt with a woman in a forest and we'll pan to the left. They turned out okay. The body's a bit warped. It's a bit long in some of them. But you get the idea with this method. Okay, so let's try a different prompt now with a woman hiking in the desert and see what it does. And they aren't too bad, actually. Looks like the same character. The body's a bit warped in some of them, but it's not too bad. So in this next prompt, I'm not going to change the location. I'll just change an item on her. So I'll put her in a, let's say, a baseball cap. And the ones with her wearing a baseball cap actually came out really good. It looks really seamless. And we'll try her in a leather jacket and see how that comes out. And the leather jacket images actually look pretty good. That top left one looks great. It's more of a photo shoot look for this one, definitely. And here are a few others. So wearing a dress on the beach looks really good. They look nice and realistic. And you can experiment with different props. So here I've added in reading a book into the prompt. And so they came out looking pretty good. And you can also use very region on these images as well. So in this one, I'll try change her leather jacket into a dress. Now, sometimes you'll go to use very region and it won't allow you to click on it. So sometimes you have to make the image into a square for some reason. All right, so I'm just gonna select the area where I want the dress to be. And then in the prompt, I'll just write in red dress. And let's see what it makes. And there you go. Not all of them are perfect, but like I said, you can keep re-rolling to see which different images you can get, but they don't look too bad. So this is just a quick look on how you can use the pan feature to get consistency in your characters. And if you'd like to save any of these images and expand them, what you can do is crop them into individual images and then take them to this website, ClipDrop, and use the Uncrop tool. And it works in a similar way to Adobe's generative fill feature. So you just drop the file into Uncrop, and then it will show you a box around it. And you just move that box to how much you want to expand the image by. Now you can get some pretty weird results with this, as it doesn't give you a prompt on what you want to be in those areas, but it just kind of guesses what it will fill the areas in with. And then just click Next. It will take a few moments to work. It will give you four different variations. And they actually look pretty good. Some will come out a bit weird, but the good ones are really good. 
and you can always save those images and then upscale them in another piece of software if you want to get higher resolution images. So I actually created a short story using all the methods that we've learnt in this video. Timothy was a tremendously talented boy. In the mornings he would play his guitar, filling his house with sweet melodies. By noon he'd paint vibrant landscapes, making colours dance on canvas. In the afternoons he would skate his way down the tallest of ramps. When evening came, he'd gallop through lush fields on his trusty steed, and just before bedtime, he'd tell stories he wrote, whisking his family away to magical lands. Everyone agreed. Timothy's talents were indeed tremendous. I hope you enjoyed that, and it just shows you what is possible by using these methods. Now, if you've learned anything in this video today, please give us a thumbs up. And make sure to check out our other videos on creating consistent characters in Midjourney. Just click the thumbnail on the screen to check it out. You won't want to miss it.